Welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle called Duplexity by James Cop. Uh, I've done a few James Cop puzzles on the channel before. They've always impressed me. They're always original and a little bit mathematical, if I remember rightly. Um, but I thought this would be a good day to try this puzzle uh, because it's very nearly the start of October and tomorrow we're going to be releasing our monthly reward on Patreon, which is a whole pack of uh, puzzles from the Sudoku Skunk Works called Duality. Now, the idea of all the puzzles in that pack is they take two very well-known Sudoku constraints um, and they merge them together in one puzzle. And that is exactly what James Cop has done with this puzzle. These lines in the grid are both operating as so-called Renban lines. I'll explain what all this means in a minute if you're new to the terminology. And also equal sum lines. So we have both of the constraints occupying these lines, which I guess is why our testers have put this in a sort of a purple with a blue hue in the background. Um, yeah, so so I don't, and by the way, I've got no clue how hard this puzzle is. So you can judge by the length of the video, perhaps. Um, the last couple of days have been very long videos. I have struggled manfully uh, <laughs> against them. Um, oh, I've just remembered I've not put my new glasses on. Hang on. Whoa. That's why I can't see the screen properly. Hang on. Let me just switch glasses. Now all will be, oh, all will be well with the world. Whoa. Can't see anything now. I'm going to have to, my, right. Okay, it's, it's very strange, new glasses. Um, anyway, now I, can, I can't really see better, but hopefully in a moment my eyes will adjust and I will be able to. Um, right, what do I need to talk to you about apart from the fact... So, so yeah, yeah, four o'clock tomorrow, the duality uh, hunt's coming out. Um, if you get through the first four puzzles in that, you'll be eligible to win the competition for the month, which is a signed copy of uh, our book. Uh, Mark and I are going to sign a copy. It will be the only copy in existence with both our signatures in it. So hopefully a nice prize for whoever gets pulled out of the hat there. Um, if you solve all 14 puzzles of the pack, then you'll get a shout out on the channel. So good luck to you. I know that some of you will be racing to do that tomorrow. Good luck if you're trying to do that, because that will be epic solving if you manage to do it. Um, other than that, we're going to stream on Sunday night, I believe. We're going to continue wading our way through our, our own app. Um, so Mark and I have been solving the puzzles that we didn't test. Um, uh, we think we've done four streams so far. I think we've got five puzzles left to do, five or six puzzles left to do. So I don't know if we'll get through them on Sunday night, but 10 o'clock Sunday night, we'd love to have your company if, you, if you're free. Um, I've released a crossword video on the channel just now. So if you like cryptic crossword content, um, I decided to do the hardest times crossword there has been in recent times um, and talk through my solve of that. Uh, it's, it's, I think it would be an interesting video if you're not used to cryptic crossword clues because there's a lot going on in that puzzle. Um, and other than that, just some birthdays to announce. So Ransk, many of you will know Ransk, an absolutely wonderful contributor to the community and a very good setter to boot. And Ranks turns 38 today. And your sister Jessica, let us know that. Jessica, sometimes known as subtitle on the channel. Um, so Ranks, hope you have a great birthday with cake, of course. Um, and Zymina, you've turned 17 today. And I know this from your brother Marco. Brother Marco sounds like a, a sort of friar, doesn't it? Or an abbot. Um, but no, just your brother called Marco. Um, Zymina, I hope you have a brilliant day. And then Joe. Joe, you have turned uh, that, that fine song from the Beatles today. When I'm, you've turned 64 today. Um, oh, when I get older, losing my hair many years from now. I wish it was many years from now. Will you still be sending me a Valentine birthday greeting bottle of wine? Um, I might have to get the guitar out later. But anyway, Joe, I understand you have watched every Cracking the Cryptic video for the last two years. Now, that is a lot of video. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And um, your daughter, Rachel, told us that you're, you're a fan of the channel. So I hope you have an absolutely brilliant 64th birthday today. Um, that's all. That's all the news. Let's get on with James Cop's puzzle, Duplexity. Um, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. The purple blue lines are equal sum lines, i.e. the sum of the digits on a line within a particular 3 by 3 box must be the same for all the boxes the line passes through. 
Different lines may have different sums, and thankfully there is an example. So if you're not used to equal sum lines, you will be able to understand them, hopefully. So it says, e.g., row 9, column 1, row 9, column 2, and row 9, column 3. So let's highlight those cells. Um, so the sum of these three cells must be the same of the cells the line passes through in the next box it goes through. So you can see it goes through those through those. Oh, purple's a dreadful choice of colour. Green actually isn't much better. Actually, I don't like red. <laughs> Let's go grey. Um, so these three digits here, the sum of these three digits, let's just check it is saying that. Row 9, column 4, row 8, column 4, row 7, column 4. Yeah, these three digits have to... So, so the sum of these is the sum of these is, of course, then the sum of those two. So that's how equal sum lines work. However, there is a complication here because digits along each line are also a set of non-repeating consecutive numbers which can appear in any order. So that means that, you know, if that if that cell there was a nine, these two would have to be seven and eight in some order because we need to make sure the line is consecutive. And you can immediately see that that breaks instantly because eight plus seven does not equal nine because we have to apply the equal sum lines constraint at the same time as the the rent so-called rem bank constraint. I've just noticed something weird about that line. Anyway, um, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I might, might as well talk about this line straight away. So when I put nine on it and realized that these couldn't be eight and seven, sort of the the light bulb went on in my brain. What What does this line consist of? It has to be a set of consecutive digits. So this digit is going to be the highest one, one of those, because if, if we put the highest one down here, this will be lower and you can't, this will be a higher sum because we're adding two digits together. So this is a high digit and it has to be the sum of those two digits, but these three together have to be consecutive. Well, it can only be three, one and two, I think. Um, if we try four here, for example, four is not equal to two plus three. So nothing else is going to work. So we immediately get a one, two pair here. No, that doesn't mean we can't put one and two on this, this line at the bottom. Although actually, if we, if we did put a one on this line at the bottom, it would have to have a two on it and that won't work because you'd have to put the one and the two in those two positions. They would sum to three, which would mean these three cells have to sum to three. So that doesn't work. So this line here, well, it's five cells long. So we could, we could ab initio have immediately said before we did the logic on this line, we could have said this line has to contain a five because however you slice up, if you imagine the digits one to nine lined up in front of you and you're going to slice a consecutive set of five digits from that that lineup. Well, how, wherever you take the slice, you're always going to pick up a five. But now, now we know there's no one on this line. There must be a six as well. Because even if we start at two, two, three, four, five, six, we're going to get to six. So there is a six on this line, which is sort of potentially interesting. Now, could there be a two on the line? If the two is over here, if, well, you no, know, there can't, I don't think, because again, if the two is on the line, it's over on this side of the line. Um, and that would mean that this line was two, three, four, five, six, because it can't have one on it. So the highest digit I could pair up with the, with the two would be a six, adding to eight. And these three digits would have to add to eight, which is impossible given we can't use a one. So this line doesn't have a two on it either. So it, why have I got a six here? I didn't mean to put six there. I wanted to put six on the line. So now we can put seven on the line, <laughs> um, which is sort of interesting. So now, Right. 
Okay, this is this is actually already very interesting. Let's think about this line mathematically for a moment. At the moment, I've put two odd numbers on it for sure. Now, given this is a set of consecutive digits, it can't possibly have four odd numbers on it. That would be impossible because it would we wouldn't then be a consecutive sequence of five cells. So that means it's got already, we have identified five and seven as being on it, and they are all its odd numbers. So that feels to me like it must have four and eight as its other digits, because otherwise it's going to sum overall. Yes, so sorry, the, the point here is, I, I don't know, I've probably elided over this point, but this, this line only visits two boxes. So we know that overall its sum must be even, because otherwise um, we're not going to be divide, able to divide this, this line's total into in, in half and get an integer. So it's got to have two odd numbers on it exactly, and it's got to have three even numbers exactly, therefore. Um, and therefore, the odd numbers, if you like, are in the middle of the sequence. So it's got to be four, five. This, this line has got to be four, five, six, seven, eight. I probably haven't explained that very eloquently, but I think that must be true. Now, four, five, six, seven, and eight add up to 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So I've got to put 15 into those two scales, cells. And the only way I can make that happen is if it's 7 and 8. So that's 7 and 8. This is 4, 5, 6. And all of a sudden, we're cooking with gas. <laughs> this is quite... This is quite cool, isn't it, so far? So there must be a 5 on this one as well. Oh, look. Yeah, look. It's... So we've got several five cell lines, all of which have to have five on it. There must be a five in one of those two cells. This one's got to have five on it. Uh, but it's a bit different because actually this line was, was rendered useful by, by it not having a one and a two on it. Now we don't know any such thing in relation to the other lines, but we do have to bear in mind that each five cell line is going to have exactly two odd numbers on it because it cannot have more without breaking mathematical parity. Um, well, at least these all have to have to have that property because they only visit two boxes and therefore they have to have an even total overall. Now, how long are the long lines? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. So this is either missing a one or a nine. Well, that's lovely. That's lovely. We've got different. We've got a different consideration here, and we can use the secret. Now, the secret is something I only tell my favourite people. But if you're watching this video, you're definitely one of those people. And the secret is that any complete row, any complete column, and indeed any complete box of a Sudoku contains the digits 1 to 9 once each, and therefore its sum is 45. So if this line was one cell longer, it would sum to 45. But it's a consecutive set of digits. So we're either going to be starting at 1 and going up to 8, or we're going to be starting at 9 and going down to 2. So this line is either missing a 1 or a 9. Now given we know the overall total, for, four, for, for nine digits is 45. This line therefore sums to either 44 if the one is missing off it, or 36 if the nine is missing off it. Now, this is interesting because how many boxes does this line travel through? The answer is three. So whatever the total is for the line, it needs to be divisible by three. Now, 36 is divisible by three, but 44 isn't. So there is no nine on this line. And that means that means the, the sum for each box the line travels through is 12. It's 36 divided by 3. Um, now, let me just think about what that means. 
12. So this adds to 12. Do I want to color this line in separate colors? I don't know, actually. Maybe it's unnecessary. It's not got a 9 on it. So this this little section here adds up to 9. No, it doesn't add up to 9. It adds up to 12, but it hasn't got a 9 on it. So it's not 3, 9. So that's either 4, 8 or 5, 7. Oh, if it was 5, 7, I'd get the 5 in the top row. Ah, uh, right. No, okay, I'm not sure how to do that. I'm afraid. I feel I should be able to do that, and I just I'm just being inept. Um, okay. So is this? Well, the okay. So this is the same maths. Look, this line. This is another eight cell line that goes through three different boxes. So again, this is going to have a sum of thirty six. Although this one is different. Look, because the path it takes is subtly different. It goes through two boxes with only leaving two cells in them. Ah, that's useful. Ah, that is useful. Because because there's no 9 on this line, this has to be a, uh, a domino summing to 12, and this has to be a domino summing to 12. So they are 4, 5, 7, and 8. And now I've got a 4, 5, 7, 8 quadruple in the middle box. And these squares have got to be 1, 2, 3, and 6. Oh, I thought that was going to be useful. I was thinking, where do those digits go in box six? And the answer is, well, they go in that foursome there, in that two by two. But unfortunately, that's four cells, not three cells. Otherwise, I could have actually located them. Um, right. So I'm seeing things here from a geometrical perspective, like that cell, where does it go in this box? Because it can't repeat on its line, it must go in that domino. So it goes down there, but it could still go in the bottom cell. So, okay, four, five, seven, and eight here. So we need one, two, three, six, and nine into this box. Mark would pencil mark that, but I'm not going to. No, 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 no. Um, Right, what on earth do we do now? <laughs> we can say that. I don't know, actually. I've not got anything at the moment. I'm trying to think. I promise you I'm trying to think about it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go back to my five cell line again, because I'm just thinking about this now. If this had a nine on it, it would have the wrong sum. Because remember, the way to think about, or the way my brain my brain thinks about it, is because I've worked out the number of odd digits that have to be on a five cell version of this line, because it has to be two odd digits. We know that they're framed by three even digits, if you like. So there's going to be even digits at either end of our five cell sequence. So imagine it was two, three, four, five, six. You can see there's a two even, then the odd, then another even, then an odd, and then there's another even. So the bookmarks are even digits. Now that means that you can't put one or nine on this line. Now if you can't put one or nine on this line, because it obviously then the bookmarks would be odd, then you've got to have four and six because you're only selecting five digits from the digits two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that means we can put four and six on this line. Well, actually, I'm going to do it like this. And the same must be true of this line. So this line's got four, five, and six on it. I'm sorry, I thought that was going to be profoundly interesting. And it's done diddly squat, hasn't it? Well, that's, that's not a four or a five. Okay, that's probably not going to change the temperature of the world. Um, so this has got four, five, and six on it. So 
So let's, well, okay. So there are only then two options for how these five cell lines work. They either start with two and they go up to six, in which case their sum is, I want to say 20, two, three, four, five, and six do add up to 20, in which case each one of these, uh, so this segment and this segment would each add up to 10. So if it was that actually, if this was a two, three, four, five, six line, the only way of making 10 would be to put 4 and 6 here, and this would be 2, 3, 5. And that doesn't work because Bilbo Bobbins, it might work. Okay, I don't know that doesn't work. All right, what's the alternative then? The alternative is that this line adds up to whatever is the total of 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, which is, oh, we've, that's that one, which is 30. So we've got 15. So we all so that would be seven, eight, with this being four, five, six. So this is either four, six, or it's seven, eight. Let's put that in. Four, six, or seven, eight. Um this is either four, six, or seven, eight. And this is either four, five or seven, eight. There's something weird going on here. So the same is true of this line because it has identical mathematical properties. Look, so this is four, six or seven, eight. <sighs> wow, that's almost really interesting. If that's four, six, You could, we've still got to put four and six on this line somewhere because this line's got every digit on it apart from nine. So if that is four, six, you can't put four, six in any of those cells. So these would be four and six. And I actually, well, that's going to be a deadly pattern. So I know that's going to be wrong because this is going to be four, six. This is going to be four, six. And there's nothing about the internal logic of the puzzle that will differentiate how to how to know that this correct solution was say double four here and double six here rather than double four here and double six here there's no way that the internal logic of the puzzle did, um, differentiates between those two possibilities in other words the puzzle would have two solutions and it wouldn't appear on cracking the cryptic if it had two solutions so we know from uniqueness this is not a four six pair but I, I don't use uniqueness in my souls on the channel because um, it assumes that the puzzle has a unique solution. And that assumption, you know, it shouldn't, if you were testing this puzzle for James, if James had, James had just set this puzzle and, and presented it to you, you couldn't make the assumption it had a unique solution. So I don't ever feel that it's a valid presumption for me to do that. I mean, obviously it, it does have a unique solution or it wouldn't appear on the channel, but um, somebody will have to have figured out why this is seven, eight without using uniqueness. And therefore I feel I should also have to do that. Um, okay. Why? Okay, hang on. So I need to get rid of my I need to, no, I need to reinstate. This is four, six, seven, or eight. But I don't know what this is, do I? Um, if this was seven, eight. Oh, hang on, have I made an error here? I might have made a mistake. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about this because I'm now thinking if this is seven eight, I've got to put seven and eight on this line, but I can't put them here. I wouldn't be able to put them here. Therefore, they'd have to go there, and this wouldn't add up to twelve. Whoa. I'm now, I now think I've broken the puzzle. I think the world doesn't add up. What have I done wrong? What's, what, 
What have I done wrong in my thinking? So, these lines definitely have to sum to an even number, so they must have two odd digits on them. So I do need three even digits. Have I missed? No, I haven't missed. There's two possibilities only. And then, unless I've added them up wrong, because there wasn't another way of making 10, was there? from two, three, four, five, and no, there's only one way of making 10. So this, this is, if this is four, six, none of those cells is four, six. Ah, ah, of course, that what I did wrong, and this is quite interesting. Well, it's not, it's not flattering to me, but it's still interesting, um, is I said, where do four, six go on this line? And I said they have to go there, but of course one of them could be up here. So in fact, the correct question I should have asked, I should have started with, so, so all of that stuff was gibberish about the 4-6 and the uniqueness. It would have been true if this had been forced to be a 4-6 pair on the Remban, but it didn't need to be because this could be 4-8. The correct question I should have asked is could this be 7-8? Let's look at that because that is wrong. Because, and the reason it's wrong is I have to now put 7 and 8 on this line and I can't put them in any of those cells. And if I make these 7, 8, these add up to 15 and then this line would add up to 45 by the equal sum lines principle, but it's only 8 cells long, so that's impossible. Isn't that really pretty? It's really pretty. So this is 4, 6. This is therefore 2, 3, 5. Um, and therefore, this is this is even more interesting. Oh no, that's using uniqueness. Oh, I shouldn't do that, should I? I mean, so now using uniqueness, I know this is four eight, for the reasons mentioned before. But I, I again, I mustn't use that. So, okay, that's quite cool. Um, right. So now, it's funny actually. That doesn't seem to. Well, it means there's a five in one of these two cells, I suppose. Has it given me dramatically more than that? Right, okay, because there's only one of seven and eight in this domino, because it's either four, eight or five, seven, and there's no sevens and eights in this triple because of the seven, eight pair in box eight, there is a seven or an eight in this sequence. There's not, there can't be both. And whatever there is, we know this sequence of digits has to add up to 12. So if it's 8, this has to be 138. And if it's 7, it couldn't be 147, so it would be 237. So there's definitely a 3 in that sequence. It's either 237 or 138. Okay, all right, Mark, I'm going to pencil mark it. It's either 237 or 138. Definitely contains a 3. This, right, there's a two, right, so that digit is not two or three because of this two, three, five triple. So this becomes one, seven or eight in the corner. And this column needs one, seven, eight, nine. Ah, right, okay, I can see something there. Okay, so I'm gonna use this line now. That can't be a one. Because if that's a one, what's the nature of this line? Well, it's a one, two, three, four quadruple. Therefore, it's average size, if you like. We've got to allocate five here and five here. But this is going to be one, four, and that's going to be two, three. And that's going to be far too many twos and threes in box four. So that's not a one. So this is seven, eight, or nine. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This has been available for a while, actually. I've just spotted. Okay. Oh, no, no. Actually, I forgive myself very slightly. It hasn't been available. It's only been available since I've realised this is a high digit. But look, there's no five on this line. Can't have a five in any of those three positions. And there's a two, three, five triple here. So there's no five on this line. It's four cells long. So that means it's either one, two, three, four, or 
it's 6789, but we now know it's got a high digit on it. So this line is 6, 7, 8, and 9, and adds up to 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So we've got a 7n and an 8, and a 6 and a 9 on the line. A 7 and an 8, and a 6 and a 9. Now... Ah, oh, this is lovely. Okay, well, that's this one is not 7, 8, then. Because this cell can't cannot be 7 or 8 so this is so the, the bottom side of this is 6 9 which means the top side of it is 7 8 which means that's not 7 8 that's not 7 8 i've got a 1 9 pair here so that's not 1 anymore this is a 7 8 pair so this ah this tells me what this line is the top line so this is this is a this is the low version as well then this is 4 6 on the left and must be two, three, five on the right. And that's not five. So these are not six. So that's looking like a one, two, three, five quadruple, which means there's a nine in the corner because we can't have two ones in the row. So that's a one. This is not a one. And these two squares are our old friends 7 and 8. Which makes me suspicious we're going to have to colour these. There's also the sort of 7s and 8s dynamics going across the, the grid here. That's not a 5 look, because it sees 4, 5, 7 and 8 in the row. Oh, the other thing, as I'm noticing, I've suddenly seemed to have filled in all my lines. Well, apart from the bottom half of this one. Not half of it, but you know what I mean. Oh, I've got a 7-8 pair here now. So these are not 7 and 8. So this is 1, 2 or 3. Definitely includes a 3. Doesn't have to include a 1. Um, right. So where do we look now? Seven, eight, two, three, four, five. Right, that cell's a naked single. That cell there cannot be one. It can, well, it can be one. It's not two, three. It's not four. It's not five. It's not six. It's not seven or eight. And it's not nine. That's a one. Right, so that means that's not a one. Oh, that's so, that's so unfortunate. That really is unfortunate. That doesn't do anything, I don't think. Is that really true? You rotten, rotten thing. Okay, one in the top row has to be up in this domino here, so it's not there. Which means one in row two is in one of two places now. It's in one of those two places. Six is in one of these places, so six is in one of those three cells in box six. It sort of feels like it might be important. What's that digit then? So that digit is not one, it's not six, and it's not four, five, seven, eight, or three. So what is it? It's either two. It can be two, I think. Oh, can it be nine? Yeah. Oh, that's annoying. Two or nine, I think, in that cell. That's not six at the bottom. That's four or five. Two, three, six, nine. I'm running out of ideas here. What, do, what am I meant to do? What's going on in this box then? We've got everything apart from four, seven, and eight placed. Ah, okay. So again, it seems to be, seems to be trying to make me think about sevens and eights, doesn't it? 
Am I actually going to be able to do anything clever though here? I'm not sure because I'm not sure that I can com I'm not sure I've quite got enough communication between the sevens and the eights to be honest. Let me try it. I I'm just going to try it for a moment. I think this is not going to work. That digit is the same as that digit is the same as that digit. Well, that's different. Therefore, that's green. Oh, OK. So that digit is. Ah, ah, that's well, that gives me another opportunity to color something here, although I don't think I'm going to be able to take it because the, because this digit here is not seven or eight, it's four or five. But we know these two together add to 12. That digit's a seven or an eight as well, but I don't know if I can. Oh, I can color it because I know what that. Ah, this is, might go somewhere now. I've got I've got a bit more communication in the grid. Oh, nearly. I'd love to know which one of those is which. Right, so that's that's orange. That's green. That's orange. This is good. This got me a digit because now this is really beautiful. Orange in this box has to go there which is actually on a cell where I could have had a one before this and cannot now put one. So this becomes a one. Which means one is in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Oh, this is gorgeous. That's really clever, James, because now one is there on the on this Renban line. So it's not there. And if that's not one, this is two, three. This adds to 12 overall and suddenly out of nowhere, uh, orange just has to be equal seven, which means green is eight. Which means this is a four eight pair, which and that's what I expected it to be, isn't it? By um, uniqueness, because I knew this couldn't be four six. Yes. Exactly, because this couldn't be four six. We knew we needed to shift one of those digits into this domino, which was the four by uniqueness. So we could have written four eight here if we were allowed to use that. Now we've actually proved logically this is four eight, which I'm pleased about. And therefore these cells at the bottom, let's see what, what's going on now, because we now know what these are. These are one, five and six. Oh, OK, there's a five, six pair in the bottom row. So that's a one. This is a five, six pair. Therefore, that's not five. This needs to be two, three and nine in this column. Can we do better than that? Probably. Uh, yeah, OK. So the question now we should ask is where does six go in row four? And the answer to that seems to be here. So that's six. That's nine. That's six. That's four. That's four by Sudoku. This becomes seven and eight, which I'm desperately keen to color. Um, Oh, this has to add to 12, so that becomes 7, 5, which means this becomes 4, 8. Which feel, uh, oh, 5 goes here in the box number 2, just by elimination. That becomes a 9 by elimination. Might have to colour our 2s and 3s as well now. That looks like it's the next thing on the agenda. Uh, what have we got in this box left? Oh, yeah, look, 2s and 3s. That's going to be very tempting. Uh, yeah, I've got two and three communication as well. OK, so we're probably going to have to do that in a moment or two. Let's see if we can go a bit further, though, with. How many sevens have we got? We haven't got all of them, Ah, but we can get that one by Sudoku. That's a seven. So now seven is in one of these two cells. So I see, and sevens in one. So we need the eight to tell us the order here, or or to find there's a six in one of these two. That would also do it. What are those two squares? Four and six. Which means that's not six. Which means I've got another two, three pair here. So these have got to be five and eight, and that is useful because now look, the eights are aligning. So we cannot now put an eight in any of these cells. Actually, we couldn't before. So that must be eight in this position, which is then green which means there's an eight in one of those two positions, which we actually know. So that becomes eight, that becomes five. Eight gets turned green. These squares have got to be a one, which now has to go there. That's probably been available for a while. And a nine, which goes here. Nine in the bottom row goes here. This is two, three and four. The two must go here. 
Oh, and in fact, look at that. So we didn't actually need um, uh, to color because I've actually got this two. And therefore that becomes three, that becomes two, that becomes three, that becomes two, that becomes two, that becomes three, that becomes two. This is now one three pair. So that becomes the six that we were looking for earlier. This is four nine. So the fours here are aligning. So the four in this column must go in the bottom cell. Um, this two gives me a three here, which gives me a two here. The three is now useful. Three, five. What a pretty puzzle, isn't it? It really is very, very elegant, this. One's threes and fives in this column. So the three must go in. Ah, that's three in the corner. <laughs> that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, okay. I'm just sort of plonking digits in at the moment. Hopefully I'm not making too many rickets in doing this. Three, nine. I'm not sort of, I'm a bit on cruise control trying to just fill some of these in. So this becomes six, seven, which seems to mean that's got to be the two in this box, I think. Which is sort of helpful. That all goes into the grid, doesn't it? If that's six, seven, it's not resolved yet. At least I don't think it is. Uh, three here, I think it's done. It just seems to be filling in. In this column, I need a nine. It's got to go here. In this box, I need two and six, which seems to be done. Whoa, if you don't put in three and five. So that becomes six, seven, seven, eight, eight, four. Four gives me four here. Six gives me six, six and five. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cute? What a lovely puzzle. Um, and let's just do our colouring. And that is, I think, how to solve it. Really enjoyed that. There was a, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, very cool, the way the five cell lines worked. And yeah, and it sort of got very interesting around this domino, didn't it? And thinking about how it would work in the context of this line. And then I thought I'd broken it briefly. <laughs> by not understanding that there could have been a four here. Um, but once once I sort of considered the possibility of this being seven and eight and realized that that was impossible because of this seven, eight pair here, everything just flowed after that. And maybe, I don't know if coloring was necessary for the sevens and eights. I thought it was going to be necessary for the twos and threes, but it, it proved to be totally superfluous so maybe it was the same with the sevens and eights but it was it was a very pretty thing to do and it seemed to get me some some nice digits so i'm very grateful to coloring for that james take a bow enjoyed it mightily i hope you have a good friday evening and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>